A long time ago, in a galaxy called New Jersey, a young inventor lived and created some amazing inventions, some of which have affected our lives even to today. But one of the things that he invented was the phonograph. It was probably his favorite invention. And it was uh, originally recordings on to aluminum foil, and later became wax cylinders. What is a wax cylinder? Well, a wax cylinder is one of these. And this wax cylinder, very much like the LP record that you know, is a record that contains grooves on it. And those grooves turn into sound that is amplified through a horn and amazes people even to today. It's, can you see it's got the, uh, the name of the title there on the, uh, on the outside rim. So this particular phonograph is a little special because it was outfitted to play language cylinders. So a little company called International Textbook Company in Scranton, Pennsylvania made this unit into a language machine. And it's got some special controls on it and I'll show you those here in a moment. But here first is a language record. So this is an ICS language system record. And this particular record has um, more than two minutes worth of, uh, of audio on it. So have you ever heard of books on tape or books on CD, maybe Audible? Well, this was the first incarnation of that before all that other technology came along. So it was a, a way of putting a book or a lesson onto a record. So you see that here, you see the Edison gold molded records here, and this was a, uh, a process that you can learn about online and how they pressed or stamped or molded these records into being in a mass production setting. So again, these are two minute cylinders, and this is a what's called an indestructible cylinder. It is not made of wax, it's made of some other harder material. This is what the cover of that uh, case looks like that it came in, a little sleeve. And then uh, Columbia also made cylinders like this one. And then Columbia also made its own phonograph. So Columbia was a competitor to Edison at the time that this equipment was made. So one of the things you'll notice here in this picture is something that doesn't belong, and that's this Edison Blue Amberall record. This is a four minute cylinder. It cannot be played on a two minute machine. In fact, if you happen to have one of these, this is my Edison Model 30, this unit will play the Blue Amberall records because it's made that way. It has a different track width than the two minute ones. So you can actually ruin the records by playing them on the opposite machine. So in other words, only play a four minute cylinder, an Amberall record on a Blue Amberall player and play your two minute cylinders on a two minute machine. Now we extend the two minutes a little bit on this guy because the recordings that were made for speech were 90 RPM. And I'm going to play you one of those here in a minute. It has a Spanish lesson on it. But because it's wax, even though it's old and it's, you know, it's actually in pretty good shape. I bought this one off of eBay. And you can see it's in really good shape. It looks all nice and shiny and stuff. But it is wax, so that over the years it has degraded some. And you'll hear that in the audio momentarily. So other wax cylinders can really get deteriorated. You can see this one here has had mold on it and the mold has actually eaten away at the wax. So on this particular cylinder, I only get good audio playback somewhere in the middle here of the record itself. It's just noisy as all get out uh, between here and here. So that's another one of the uh, records that you can play on this machine. So you've got the Edison ones, you've got the Columbia ones, and then you've got the language ones as well. But without a speed control, you won't be able to play the language records. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to show you some of the parts and features of this unit. On your left, you'll see the reproducer, which is this part right here. The reproducer is a needle, amplifier, and speaker all in one. This is all you need on an old cylinder phonograph. This thing uses no electricity. So everything that happens, happens physically. So the sounds are physically uh, sent through the system. This is the, uh, the stylus that you see there. And uh, a good big thank you to goes out there to Victrola Guy who uh, 
got me in touch with this particular stylus. And you'll see it has kind of a little doorknob on it. It's not really a, a sticking out like a regular standard needle would. You know, it's not like pointed in that regard. But uh, you can see it's a Model C reproducer. And inside of there, underneath the needle, is what's called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm pushes the waves of sound through this tube right here and are amplified through a horn. So there's no real speaker in the sense that, uh, like a traditional speaker. Your turntable is called the mandrel. So the mandrel is this part here, and your record slides onto the mandrel. Right on the left here, you'll see this is your speed control. This is the on-off switch. So if I flip this, you'll see the unit will take off. Turn it off for now. And then this right here is a backspace key. So as you were playing your language cylinders and you wanted to hear something repeated, you could just simply press this little key here and you'll see that the back, the, uh, the unit, the, the reproducer, moves back just a little bit. See there? So it's almost like a rewind, but there's nothing to rewind, okay? So you have this little, uh, this little gate here that opens up and you put your cylinder on there. There is a crank on the side. Your crank is what powers the, uh, the motor inside. So the motor is spring-loaded. I don't have a traditional crank yet. I've got one ordered and I've got to modify it when it gets here. But in this case, what I do is I just turn this and I've already got it pretty tight, so I don't want to tighten it up too much more. But uh, the unit there is, uh, is ran by a spring. And I'll show you what all of that looks like on the underneath side, in case you didn't see my little preview video not too long ago. But uh, underneath, uh, there's, a, there's what's called the governor right here, and that helps to control the speed. And just over here is some little brushes, and as you turn the speed control knob on this side, it pushes these little brushes in and out on this little table that uh, controls your speed. It is belt driven, so there's a belt that goes from here up here to the top of the mandrel, which is, uh, look, there it goes, it's, uh, it's up here. So the belt goes from here down to here, and that's what drives the unit. And I'll turn it on just for a second so you can kind of see everything twirling around in there. And when I found this at a little antique store, it would go you could just kind of push on it, push on the mandrel, and it would kind of take off, but it did not take off on its own. After oiling it, greasing it, and cleaning it, it will, in fact, take off right away, as you can see. So look at that. It's 100 years old, and the thing still operates, just with a little TLC. Pretty neat, huh? Well, I'm going to set it up now so I can play you a little bit of the language cylinder, and we'll get us a little lesson here in Spanish. All right, so again, loading the record is just this easy. Move this little gate out of the way, and we're going to push on the, uh, the language cylinder, which is, uh, where did I put it? Oh, it's over here. And I'm going to put it right under there and push it in until it just kind of decides not to go on there anymore. And close that up. And then what I'll do is I'll place my stylus somewhere near the beginning of the of the record right over here okay now you'll notice that uh, I don't know if we talked about this already but the horn is going to be what's going to amplify the sound for us and um, I have a couple of little horns that are kind of makeshift horns this is a little uh, noisemaker that I got from the dollar store and it just so happens that I cut it so that it fits on there so this will give us a smaller sound might maybe not as loud but uh, it does work but, in order to get some really amazing sound quality, I have something a little more special. Those of you who are auto mechanics out there will be proud of me. I have a flow tool. You can see that on there. This is a flow tool funnel that I got at Walmart for a couple of dollars. And it's been retrofitted with a little fitting right there, a little plumbing copper fitting glued on there. And, of course, I didn't think this up myself. I wish I was that clever. But uh, the Victrola guy, also on YouTube, is the one that showed me how to make this thing. So there we go. We're looking down the, uh, the center of the funnel. And you can place the funnel right there on the reproducer. And 
There we go. We have a nice plastic funnel. So you say, where's the original horn? Well, I didn't get the original horn with this unit, um, and I'm probably not going to get one because they're like $50 just for the horn, even a, a reproduction of a horn. The real ones are even more than that. But uh, anyway, it sounds great just to use this little cheap alternative. And so that's what we're going to play our record through for you now. So let me get that queued up, and we'll hear a little Spanish. Now, again, we talked about wax cylinders. Wax cylinders degrade, and you'll hear the degradation in this recording. Even though the, the record itself looks fantastic, it's nice and clean and smooth, um, some of the material has been pressed down. I guess the grooves get pressed down, and uh, they disappear over time. So one other quick thing I'll tell you is that regular records like LPs that some of you collect out there, the sound is recorded this way, left and right. This one records like a sewing machine. So the when it's originally cut, the needle is actually poking into the or cutting into the uh, uh, into the the uh, record vertically. So it's called a vertical cut record. Okay, so just a little information there. All right, let's hear this thing. So you're going to hear the guy counting here. And you're probably saying, oh, that was awful. How could somebody stand to sit there and listen to that all day? Well, back when it was originally made, it didn't sound that awful. It, it sounded good. But again, these records are over 100 years old. And wax, you know, is really not made to last that long. So in any case, uh, we're going to move on to the indestructible cylinder because the indestructible, you'll be amazed at how much sound comes out of this thing. And I'll show you the, different, the difference in sound quality between the two horns that I've got here, my two makeshift horns. So first, we're going to load our indestructible cylinder onto the mandrel here. Close that up. And you notice it has kind of a square edge here versus a, a round edge like the, uh, the Edison ones are made. I don't know if you can see the difference there. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up, and we'll blast out some music here. Okay, so I've already readjusted the speed, and we're ready to blast off with my little cardboard horn, and I'll let you hear what that sounds like. So let's go ahead and switch that out with our other horn. I'll let you hear the difference. Inserting big horn, and off we go. Did you notice our new gold teeth, Mr. 
soda? Why, no, she had an outflow. <laughs> then that wasn't my wife. <laughs> Mr. Murray will sing, I'm happy when the band plays Dixie. Have you ever felt a strange sensation when the band begins to play? Have you noticed how you'll march along and follow the band all day? When they play my country, tears of me, everybody cheers a good old band. But there's one more tune they'll play, it's to miss the song of the Dixie Land. So now you've been taken back in time with a time machine. That's right. This little guy is a time machine that just took us back in time to around 1903 or later, possibly, but depending on when that record was made. And we've heard voices from the past as a result of this unit being played, which is pretty cool. Now, there's another really cool thing about this machine that, uh, that my Model 30 couldn't even do. Yes, the Model 30, the fancy guy over here that plays really awesome. Um, well, here, let's, hear, let's just hear all, how awesome it is. You can kind of get an, an example of the difference between the two in their audio playback. All right. So here, let's play the, uh, let's play the Model 30 for you here. So you get an idea, this guy was much more polished and uh, refined by the time that it was invented. But getting back to this guy over here, uh, we were talking about how it has a feature that is pretty spiffy. Well, the feature is the, the ability to be able to record. And this particular unit did come with a recording head. The problem is the needle is missing from the recording head. And so far, I have not been able to locate a, uh, a, a replacement uh, recording needle. So I'll keep an eye on that. If I find one, then I'll make a recording and play it back for you. However, uh, I say that because, well, I say however, <laughs> because I've actually found what's called a Edison dictation machine, and uh, it actually runs on an electric motor, but it's very much the same kind of setup as this. I've actually found two other machines. I found a, a, a playback machine that's a, uh, an Edison, it's called a, uh, an Edison Edaphone. And I found a playback only unit and I found a machine that records and I've got the playback machine running. I'll show you that in a future video. And then the one that plays and records, I need to get it oiled and cleaned up and ready to go. So I'll have those for you on a future video. So this is something I've been fascinated with ever since I was a kid. In fact, when I was a kid, I had a poster on my wall that had uh, this exact machine or one similar to it. Uh, on it and I looked at that poster all the time and thought I would never be able to own one of these things it would never be within my grasp well I walked into that antique store and found this guy for a hundred and thirty dollars he had a hundred and fifty on it and I offered him a hundred and thirty and uh, yeah so here I am playing with one right now so uh, anyway this is all for this video for now and I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction hopefully I didn't throw too much information at you at once but I'm kind of giving you an assimilation of all the things I've learned about these machines since I started so um, anyway fascinating technology fascinating old technology and uh, love it so uh, please share with a friend uh, please subscribe and uh, leave a comment below Leave a like as well if you liked it. And uh, also check out the Victrola guy 
his channel if you just want to sit and watch videos about cylinder players and recorders till you pass out uh, his channel is a great place to stop by again thanks for watching and we'll see you next time